Hello everybody and welcome back to my sunroom on this beautiful sunny cold day here in East Tennessee. The temperature swings are in full force right now. It was a sunny 70 degrees just a few days ago and this morning the frost was so thick it looked like it snowed. Today we're going to talk about moss, one of my favorite things. So many of you have asked me about growing orchids in moss how do I water and fertilize them in moss? And how do I get it to sprout? I live in an area where there's, grow there's moss growing everywhere. So I can't help but notice how it reacts to certain conditions. I've been growing in moss for 20 years. And so I've learned to adjust my watering and my fertilizing according to the weather conditions and also to the conditions in my grow room. My two favorite mosses for my orchids to grow in are the best grow orchid moss, which is New Zealand sphagnum moss, beautiful moss. And then I also like the better grow orchid moss that is from Chile. So I'm going to start off by watering this little guy. It's a Dendrobium kiki that I started in moss. And I took the moss that he was born in and I used it in this three inch orchid pot. So when I water orchids in moss, I take a very small amount. And then I add if I need to. Think of it like you're watering a sponge because that's exactly what moss acts like. It holds water exactly like a sponge. And you know how a sponge stays damp for a very long time? It's the same with moss. So I water with very small amounts. I use this tiny little cup that holds about two ounces and I'm going to, I'm going to water this slowly and I'm going to water it carefully. I've got these bark pieces on top of this moss just to remind me, slow down when you're watering in moss, just take your time. You don't want to overwater. So here we go. I'm just going to very slowly. I kind of like to lift it. And you're going to be amazed how quickly this is going to rehydrate. Sorry, I hope I didn't get out of that frame. Slowly, just take your time. You don't want to overwater because then you're going to have a mess on your hands. And I can feel that it's starting to get heavier. That's how you're going to know when it needs to be watered. It's going to be very, very light in weight. It's barely going to weigh anything at all. If you can imagine just what the weight of the pot and the little plant is, not very much. So I don't even really need to wait to see if any moisture comes through these holes in the bottom. I can kind of feel that this is now watered. You can wait until the water comes through if you want to, just to make sure. But I've been watering in moss for so long that if I leave that sitting there for a few minutes, there's going to be some water drained through. I might water it just a tiny, tiny bit more. Well, I was about to add some more and it started draining just a little bit through the bottom. So I know that's all that it needs. So remember when you're watering in moss, just a small amount slowly. That's the ticket. You don't want to water too quickly because if you do, you tend to overwater. Moss is very unique because the water in moss is dispersed by capillary action. So it dries from the bottom of the pot to the top, the opposite of bark. So if the top of your moss is just slightly damp, it's going to be dry on the bottom. That's a good thing to keep in mind. A really common question that I get about growing orchids in moss is how do I know when it does need to be water? Okay, I'm always lifting the pots. 
with my orchids that are growing in moss. If it's really lightweight, like I said before, then it needs to be watered. If you can just imagine, if, this, if you're lifting this and it just doesn't feel like you're lifting anything, then your moss needs to be watered. Also, you're gonna look at your moss. It becomes a really light beige. See how this is kind of a medium. When it starts getting a little bit lighter in color, that means that it's drying out. If it looks like it's too dark, then that means it's, it's overwatered and you're gonna have to cut back on it next time. Moss isn't a medium that you can just throw water on it and walk away. I'm really, really patient with it and I'm careful not to overwater it. Once you overwater it, it takes it a long time to dry out and, and then you've kind of got a mushy mess. In these two pots, these are my two cattleyas. I have used non-dissolvable packing peanuts in the bottom of these pots so that the water can drain away from the moss and they won't set in water. They will drain for about 30 minutes to an hour after you've watered them. That's how much water moss holds. So make sure that you're going back and making sure they're not setting down in water or that you have them set up something like this so that you've got something on the bottom of the pot that wicks it away and it doesn't touch the moss once the water drains. Another question is how do I fertilize my orchids in moss? You're gonna to need to remember that moss is like that sponge. Sponges hang on to water for a long time. And so moss hangs on to nutrients really well. So I don't use as much fertilizer with my orchids in moss as I do my orchids in bark. Moss likes slightly acidic conditions, but it won't do well with lots of fertilizers or chemicals. High acidity will make it break down and just make it turn to mush. So I fertilize lightly in moss, about 200 parts per million, or about half or even one fourth of your regular fertilizer. I fertilize every other watering, and that could be every week in the summer to every two weeks in the winter, just depends on when they dry out. I water, pardon me, I fertilize at about 200 parts per million with cow mag, seaweed extract, and fertilizer. And in between, I'm gonna use just cow mag and seaweed extract without the fertilizer. And from time to time, I use just plain reverse osmosis water, especially in the winter. It helps to reboot the pot. It removes any excess salts and it helps clean up the moss some. Another really important thing to keep in mind is to pack your moss lightly in your orchid pots. If it's packed too tightly, the water won't penetrate the moss anymore and the roots will die from lack of moisture. Moss has to have room to expand or it won't even get dampened. That's why so many orchids that you buy are packed in moss so tightly. They need to be replanted out of it so soon or the roots will just suffocate. And a little side note, if you're prone to overwatering your orchids, I completely understand that. But if you are, this option might not be the best for you to grow your orchids in. You might wanna think about growing your orchids in bark or in a bark moss mix. I check the weight of my orchid pots growing in moss really often to make sure that I don't overwater it and remember, you have to water it lightly and slowly. You can't get in a rush. And as soon as you see the water start to drain out the bottom of that pot, stop watering it and then go back and check on it again. Make sure there's no water setting in its dish. And how do I get my orchid moss to sprout? It just does. I've been growing with it for so long and you almost get intuitive with it. Do you see how it sprouted so pretty up in here? Yeah. I don't overwater it. I don't underwater it. 
I pack it very loosely. Do you see how loosely this is packed? And what I can do is I can just actually take this moss, put it down in a pot, and the orchid is pretty much ready to go. This is how I hydrate my moss before I use it. So you see how light and airy it is. It's beautiful stuff. I hope that this gives you lots of tips and ideas about growing your orchids in moss. And before I end the video, I would love to say the blessing over you, your families, and your orchids. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you and your families his peace. You all make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.